Hello everybody. We're back with part two of our Infinite Lagrange guide series. Today we're going to be talking about tech points as well as uh, upgrading your blueprints. More specifically, upgrading the various aspects of your blueprints, such as the weapon systems using tech files. Now, if you are a new player, just coming into this game, you might be wondering what the heck are tech files? What are tech points? Well, a simple uh, explanation. Tech points are the little blue points that ships get either by opening up the black market file boxes or any kind of loot crate box that has a chance to reward you with a ship blueprint or with these tech points right here. Now, tech points are broken down into two kinds. There are permanent tech points, which when the server ends and everything is reset, and you go on to the next one, you keep these points and you can reallocate them however you want. And then there are temporary tech points. Temporary tech points range from zero to 50. And these go up with experience that you gain one of a couple ways. You can either gain experience by fighting NPCs, allowing you to level a ship up from 0 all the way to 30, giving you 30 free tech points, this little gray number here. And then from level 30 to 50, you can either use these combat microchips, which you can sometimes get as quest rewards, or you can get them for PvP, fighting against other players. Or, uh, sorry, PvE, fighting against NPCs. Um, you can also technically buy them with UE coins by doing the quests that trades them for these. Um, however, using these is not the only way to go past level 30. PvP, once a certain point in a server is reached, which I will show you right here. Um, once the story reaches this tier 4 here. Blueprint PvP experience is unlocked, and so fighting other players will give you experience. That's how you get these ships up to level 50. Now, as mentioned before, the permanent tech points, such as these ones that I have right here, they stay with your ship forever. The temporary, however, expire at the end of the server. It is worth noting that the higher you level a ship, the more and more experience it will take in order to level it further as you can see right here this value just keeps going up and up so even using all of the microchips that I have I can only add 14 of the 50 levels to this ship this scales of course with the size of the ship small stuff such as this SC fighter just these five chips alone puts this at 25 and if I used all of them almost at 50. So the size of the ship matters as part of the reason why the meta is uh, revolves around frigates and destroyers. They're cheap both to produce and in how much time they take and in the amount of experience it takes to level them up. Uh, additionally, tech points that you get from boxes are weighted. You are more likely to get tech points for a frigate or destroyer than you are to get it for say a cruiser or a carrier or a battle cruiser uh, so that more or less tells you what a tech point is what are they good for well we're going to go to the ship that has the most of them here my lovely reliant class those of you who saw my first video know what i think of this ship the reliant stealth has several different systems that can be upgraded all ships have certain systems that are the same, such as the propulsion, armor, energy, command, and then a weapon system of some form. Certain ships, or variants of ships, have special effects. Example being, this one has two different weapon systems, and this version has a field camouflage system. I'm not going to go into the different statistics of a ship in this video, that will be a topic for another video. However, I will go over the different upgrades that you can get. Now, in this particular ship, 
I have unlocked six weapon upgrades for my two cluster torpedoes. But that is not the maximum number that the ship has. You are limited by the slots of upgrades that a ship has in what upgrades can be applied. So, to say that another way, I have six upgrade slots for my weapon. There are eight weapon upgrades. I have to pick six of them. Um, you use your tech points to purchase these upgrades. Let's give you a little example here in Where is the propulsion? There it is. In the propulsion system, if I wanted to increase my warp speed by 5% more, it would cost me two tech points to do so. Now, prior to a recent patch a couple months ago, you could reset these tech points for free an unlimited number of times, allowing you to do some funky fun stuff that I'm not going to bother covering because it's no longer relevant. Now, however, the first reset of a system, so propulsion or armor or weapons, that is free. Free. After that, however, it will cost you 30,000 UE coins to reset a system. It's advised that you don't reset your systems a lot <laughs> until later on when you have a lot of UE coin production. Um, now, in addition to tech points and purchasing various perks such as warp speed, cruising speed, weapon damage, rate of fire, things of that nature. You also can upgrade the weapon itself. If I click the right button. This is called weapon adjustment. Now, the ship that I'm currently showing you only has one weapon system, and that is the Iron Dwarf Special Cluster Torpedo. But I will give you guys an example of another ship that I have not upgraded. Pretty sure I've not upgraded this one. Yeah. The upgrades increase the damage of the weapon. The amount varies from ship to ship with big, <coughs> excuse me, battle cruisers and the like having only 2% and smaller ships usually having higher percents. To upgrade these weapon systems, you make use of another type of tech. It's not really a tech point, um, but it is a weapon tech. Weapon techs come in many different flavors, such as basic cannon tech, like these, railguns, such as these, Oh, I already upgraded this one. Let's do a different one. Let's do, 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 do something I have not upgraded. Yeah, this will work. And torpedo, missile, etc. There are several different tech points. And if you want to know exactly what kind of tech points there are, you can go over to your research tree open the store and pick any chest and just scroll all the way down to see the different weapon techs. So you see we have basic cannons, rail guns, missiles, ion cannons, torpedoes, pulse cannons. I'll cover the different types of weapons in another video. Drone control and UAV. I am going to go ahead and just grab my daily boxes here just because I need it for this. Now, the two biggest ways for you to get weapon techs are opening up chests, such as the black market one right here. And you see here, I got a tech point for a battle cruiser. This is actually kind of uh, unexpected, but I will take it. I got two weapon techs and one research point. Now you don't, when you open the chest, you don't just get the point immediately. You do get the research points and the weapon techs, but the tech point takes time to research. This can be sped up with Proxima coins, or if you have a special type of blueprint box that gives it to you for free. 
I covered the different blueprint boxes in a previous video, so feel free to take a look at that if you want some more details. Now, you can also buy a random assortment of tech files for 20,000 UE coins. I do not advise this. I produce a fair amount of UE coins every day, but even with the amount that I produce, which you can see right here, or maybe I cannot show you it from right here. Here we go. Um, 2,000 UE coins per hour. So I produce 48,000 in a day. Even producing 48,000 in a day, 20,000 of them are used up by the boxes, and the rest of them are easily spent on various purchases and upgrades at the NPC stores, which I will get to in just a moment. So I do not advise buying the weapon tech files. You will get plenty of them from these generic tech files like this, as well as getting combat microchips, which are researched so in one hour, I'll come back, I'll put a second one on, and I'll get whatever's inside that. Now, I mentioned buying things from the NPC stores. The reason why that's important is because these weapon techs are not only used for upgrading your blueprints, upgrading the weapons on your ships. They are also used as part of the research agreement. Now, I did not cover this in the previous video because I did not have enough points to do a research agreement, and I still don't. However, I am going to cover it now. When you unlock phase one, phase two, and phase three of a research agreement, you can speed up the time it takes for these to be completed in phase one and phase two by using weapon techs, those three little chips that I just showed you. Phase three, you have to use uh, tech points, supposedly, to speed that one up. I have never done that myself. However, I wouldn't do that because tech points are power or a direct permanent upgrade to your ships. Um, so I would either wait out the timer to get you a draw or just do phase one and phase two and then grab whatever comes out. The choice is yours. Now, let's say for the sake of argument that you have a solar whale and you want to upgrade its integrated armory. Most specifically, you really want to upgrade its missile system, but you don't have enough points or you have a Constantine the Great and you want to upgrade its weapon system it costs 13 tech files to try and upgrade it one time for a 2% for the first level 4% 6% whatever damage buff your success rate is denoted down here and the different tech files, weapon tech files that you use will increase this chance by a certain amount. R1 tech files have no bonus. They're only really useful as filler for filling up the requirements. R2 give a 2% bonus for each one. They're also not very useful. As you can see here, I put three of them in. It's 6% increased uh, success chance. Not very good. Tier 3 on the other hand, give a significant bonus, 10% per chip. So these are pretty good. In fact, if I were to put in uh, 10 of these, I would have a 100% chance to succeed. Just like this, I am already at 60% chance to succeed. And then you have level four, tech level four, these are 25% chance each. And then finally, you have tech level five. And these are 40% each. So it's a pretty big jump. You go from 2% to 10% to 25% to 40%. I don't advise using very many of these R level fives on bigger ships such as this, because what you'll find is you use two points, you're at 85% you now have to spend 11 points worth of other stuff. And if you hit 100%, that's it. Everything past that's wasted. So it's best to use your level fives on your smaller ships that only require one or maybe two 
upgrade chips in order to increase the level of. But what if happens if you don't have what you actually need for an upgrade? What do you do then? Well, you can either open boxes and try and get the ones that you want, or you can find yourself an NPC city, such as this one right here. These NPC cities have NPC outposts called trading posts. You can send one of your friendly ships to trade or liaise with these cities. Doing so looks like this. Now you have two options, one that will allow you to purchase stuff and the other which will allow you to sell something to purchase something else. In the trade, which I will go over in another video, you have the technology section. This is refreshed every single day. A new varied assortment of tech points or uh, tech chips are offered, each costing a various amount of UE coins. The lower tiered stuff, R3, R2, and R1, cost very little. As you go up, however, the cost also increase. 2400 for an R3, 36 for an R4, but 6000 for an R5. These tiers matter a lot. They matter for upgrading your smaller, weaker ships. Like I said before, they may only require one point. So if it only requires one chip, you put an R5 into it, boom, got a big chance of leveling up that weapon. Cheaper ones for the bigger ships. But you're limited to how many you can buy in a day. Now, I've already bought five from another city, so I can only buy five more from here. And I am, in fact, going to do that. But I'm going to buy these lower tier ones that are cheaper because I don't actually need the bigger ones. I, I am going to buy these two just because of them being the only ones that I want. But you don't have to do that. Up here, you have the tech trade. Now, I will cover speed ups and prefabs in another video when we are talking about the base upgrading and upgrade orders. However, I want to show you these here because they do directly relate to your tech chips. You can trade unwanted blueprint te weapon techs for speed ups and prefab modules. This can be especially powerful in the early game when you will have usually a good number of these techs and not need them for example on your first server you might come across a bunch of these pulse cannon weapon techs and not have a pulse cannon ship or any kind of energy weapon ship that can use them i find myself having a lot of leftover weapon techs for my fighters and drones not because i don't have any fighters and drones but because once i've fully upgraded the weapon system of my fighter the chip becomes pointless. There, there's nothing else you can do with it except for use it in the research agreement or to buy speed ups. Now, building speed ups, which are these green ones here, they cost quite a bit. To buy a set of 10 requires 40 levels worth of weapon techs. So an R1 is one point, an R2 is two points, and so on up to R5. Now, I would never suggest trading in an R5 to buy one of these, considering you need eight R5s in order to unlock a set of 10 uh, prefab speedups. And as you just saw, that's 50,000 UE coins almost. That's a lot. It's two days worth of UE coin production for some people, or one for me. Prefabs work the same way. Basically, it's just double. Still costs 40 to get the highest level, but you get 20 of these instead of only 10 or only 10 in the speed ups. These are not used for constructing your base. They are used to speed up the production of your ship. So pretty straightforward. I do strongly encourage if you're in a uh, system with a lot of combat that you do buy these. But I would almost always say it's better to buy these normal speed ups before buying um, the ship production speedups. 
Now, I do not know off the top of my head if you are limited on the number that you can buy. Like, if you buy these three, can you go to another city and buy more? I don't know. I think you can, but I don't know. I have not done that. I haven't had a need to. I think that about covers it for weapon techs. Weapon techs are very, very powerful and should not be ignored, especially not by newer players who have a limited number of ships because adding that 30% increased damage to your weapon system is huge. Taking this weapon from 400 damage per shot to 520 damage per shot is a lot when a ship has armor. Now, it's not as relevant for an energy weapon system because energy defense is a thing, which I will cover that when I do my video on statistics that ships have. But suffice to say, don't sleep on your weapon techs. And don't sleep on your tech points. As you can see here, I have two extra tech points, but I'm not spending them because I am saving them. I am saving them for a very important upgrade for my ship. One that requires a lot of points. This one. This one makes my Antonius ships and Antonius aircraft have a 5 and then 10% with the second tier chance. 5% and 10% chance to do 80% additional damage. That is 80% before armor is taking into account. Or energy resistance, but that's a flat percentage so it doesn't matter as much. It is very, very powerful. If you have not done so already, I highly advise you take a look at your ships and see what upgrades you can get. Now, I will go over one last thing for you, and that is what order should you upgrade your ships in? Now, this can boil down to personal preference, but a few general rules of thumb. If you are using a smaller ship, like a frigate, that frigate probably has a specialized role, something it does really well. For example, the Carillon here, or the Reliot. The Reliot A-type is an anti-ship frigate. It has a rapid-fire battery that does very little damage and only shoots at aircraft, and it has a big torpedo system That hits for 35 damage, and while it prioritizes aircraft, also does pretty good against frigates and destroyers. Now, this ship, very weak, but in the early game, especially on your first and second server, it will serve you quite well. It will serve you even better if you invest into its weapon systems. But which one do you want? You have an anti-ship torpedo system with an M next to it? And the rapid fire battery. Well, this M means that this is the ship's main weapon. Main weapons are important because there are ways to disable them. Special subsystems and fighters that have priorities that will allow them to damage these systems. Every system in the game currently has hit points, as you can see here. And if it takes enough damage, the system is knocked out for the rest of that battle. I'm not sure if it's knocked out until you return to base to repair, but I'm pretty sure it's just for the rest of the battle. So, this ship, what would I upgrade first? Well, it only has four upgradable systems. The battery that shoots down aircraft, which is not very strong. Armor, of which it has four so or two slots. And three options. Propulsion, which has two slots and two options. And then the main weapon, which has six slots and a whole bunch of options. I'm sure you can guess you would upgrade the weapon system first. Weapon upgrades generally fall into two flavors. You have basic statistic upgrades, such as doing 2% more damage per shot. 3% or whatever percentage decreased cooldown, meaning increased rate of fire. Chance to hit an enemy. Now this can be broken up 
So this says increase all missile and torpedo hit rates. And then system HP. Siege damage works just kind of like regular damage, but I will cover the statistics of a ship in another video. Suffice to say, this number doesn't matter very much. <laughs> uh, the second type are strategies. Now, strategies have two different types. The first type is only affecting yourself, such as this one here. And the second type is a command strategy. Command strategies are often found in the command system, if the ship has one, but not always. These only affect the fleet and the ship in question when you are the flagship of that fleet. So the, the strategy, flagship strategy for the Reliot is focus fire. All ships pretty much have focus fire as a default strategy. Some ships have better strategies or more strategies. Some do not. For example, one of my favorite ships, the anti-aircraft Wing Tussar, has several. It has focus fire just like all the other ships. It has a buff that causes your aircrafts or anti-aircraft weapons in your fleet to have an increased hit rate. The it scales up quite a bit when you put points into it. Starts at 1, then goes up to like 5, 10, 15. Or something like that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Um, and will cause your anti-aircraft weapon to fire at all the enemies. All the enemy aircraft in your row. I'll cover that when I get into combat. But it also has this. Increases your aircraft hit rate against enemy fighters by 30% when your fleet includes fighters. This one... This one affects not just itself, like these ones do, although this one also affects all of your fleet members, but this one affects your aircraft. Aircraft, being a sub part of ships, generally only are affected by the ship that is carrying them. So that's a pretty powerful bonus. Now, back to our example of upgrades, weapons. Weapons are generally the first thing that you will upgrade on a ship, unless the ship's primary function is not to fight. Such is the case with the stealth type. Now the stealth type has one really big function, and that is, it can dodge things. It is very nimble. With its evasion bonuses found in the armor system, as well as its field camouflage system, This ship is capable of dodging a lot of enemy fire. A lot. So this is the first thing that I upgrade on this ship, is its evasion. I try to crank that stat up as high as I can possibly get it. More evasion means I take less hits. Taking less hits means this thing's very fragile hit point total allows it to stay in the fight longer. Damage in this game is divided up in uh, to DPM, damage per minute, not damage per second. So this is how much damage potential I can put out every minute I survive combat. Most combats end within three minutes. So if I can only put out 15,000 damage per minute, not counting armor, this Reliot would be able to kill another Reliot if all of its missiles hit in those three minutes. If it dodges 50% of my shots, then the enemy Reliot would stay alive. I hope you found this video informative. If you did, please leave a like. If you did not, please leave a comment. Tell me what I got wrong. As I mentioned in my previous video, I have only been playing Infinite Lagrange for a couple months, but I have played similar games to it including another game created by NetEase, or I should say licensed by NetEase. I always appreciate your feedback, and I do read the comments on my videos. Uh, stay tuned for more videos that I will be releasing periodically in this tutorial series. The next video that I release is very likely going to be on uh, combat, specifically statistics, the statistics of a ship, and their combat roles. 
I hope you all enjoyed that. Fly safe.